Okay, so let's take a look at a resolve, reconcile, explain question. First, the question stem. Notice the word explanation. Each of the following of true contributes to an explanation of the increase mentioned above, except. So ignore the except for a second. I'm going to get to this point fairly quickly. But the key word is explanation. Resolve, reconcile, explain. In this question type, RRE, you pretty much just have to scan the question stem and identify one of these three words. Paradox is a word that gets used very frequently. Uh, resolve the paradox. Right, but you spot these keywords, you're good. You know it's already a question. There's not too much variation there. This particular question stem is rather short. Soon we'll see a question stem that's longer. So in that question, your ability to quickly identify could save you five or 10 seconds even. All right, so let's take a look at the stimulus. After replacing his old gas water heater with a new pilotless gas heater, water heater, that is rated as highly efficient, Jimmy's gas bills increased. Okay, so. Recall from the theory that in the stimulus, what we're going to encounter is a set of facts. And sure enough, this is a set of facts, right? It's just, I mean, you, you can slice and dice this however finely you want. You can just, oh, this is just one phenomenon, one big fact. Sure, you can say like, well, actually, no, it's a couple of different facts. Like, for example, he had an old gas water heater. That's one fact. He replaced it. That's two facts. Replace it with a new pilot. That's three facts, right? But that's kind of arbitrary, right? But the point is, all of this is what we're going to call phenomenon or, you know, a set of facts. And now the next question I want to ask you is, did you have that psychological reaction of, hmm, that's weird. And here, I'll, I'm actually not sure what to guess. I'm going to guess probably not. Y you probably didn't have this psychological reaction. I mean, I didn't. And I think the reason is because I kind of already have a feeling for uh, what might be going on. In other words, what I'm saying is I'm familiar enough with this subject matter such that this doesn't strike me as weird, such that I feel like I can probably explain what's happening here. That's why I'm not having this reaction. Okay. Now, if you were not familiar with this subject matter, you probably would have this reaction. And the next question we're going to do is going to be a, um, it's going to have a subject matter, which I'm going to guess you're not familiar with. So you might be like, oh, that's, that's really strange. I wonder what's going on. So just kind of take note of that, right? Did you have this reaction? Didn't you have this reaction? If you did, then you're looking for a hypothesis to try to ex dispel this, right? Be like, okay, it's not so weird because of whatever story you want to tell. If you didn't have this uh, reaction, that's because you already formed a hypothesis in your mind, perhaps implicitly, that dispelled the sense of weirdness. Either way, we're gonna, either road is gonna take us to a hypothesis. So let, let's now try to think of some hypotheses, right? For resolve, reconcile, understand what the facts are, okay? Understand what the phenomenon is. We know he had an old gas water heater. We know he replaced it with a new pilot, whatever pilot is, this gas water heater. And we know that this new one, this, this new one, which is pilotless, right? The, the, here's a noun, a bit of a grammar analysis, and you, you never get away from grammar analysis on LSAT, no matter what. But all of these are just adjectives. It's new, it's pilotless, it's gas water heater, it's also been rated as highly efficient. So all of this is just um, modifying the type of gas water heater it is. Right? So after all of this, his gas bills increase. See, I suppose what could be weird about this is you know, perhaps we might have expected his gas bills to go down, right? But it didn't go down. It actually went up. Oh, that's kind of weird. How come after replacing his old gas water heater with something that presumably is more efficient, uh, his gas bills actually went up? As soon as I say that's weird, I'm like, that's, come on, that's not so weird, right? There's so many, can't you come up with reasons, right? Let, let's, let's try to come up with some reasons why this um, could have happened. We're really just brainstorming here, so don't, don't feel like you have to don't feel like you can come up with something um, silly. Like I'll, I'll start. How about his neighbor has been siphoning gas from him? <laughs> they tapped into his gas line and has been siphoning his gas, right? His unscrupulous neighbor. I mean, that surely would explain it, right? How about um, his uh, utility company jacked up gas prices, increased uh, prices on gas. Surely that would explain why his gas bills could have increased in spite of the fact that he got a new presumably more efficient gas heater. And on that note, presumably more efficient, right? Did you guys catch that? That new gas heater is rated as highly efficient. Now, does that mean it's actually highly efficient? I mean, if you don't know anything else about uh, the facts, surely this is a piece of evidence that suggests it actually is highly efficient, but it is not dispositive, meaning it is not a slam dunk 
case closed absolutely highly efficient. It's possible that this rating system is flawed. It's possible that this rating system doesn't reflect reality, right? So this is an assumption you want to you want to uh, think about. So that perhaps may be the explanation. Um, the rating system is flawed in some way, right? And his new, it, it, I mean. I'm not going to spell the rest of this out, but the rest of the hypothesis is that his new gas water heater is actually less efficient than his old one, right? You got hosed, Jimmy. How about uh, hypothesis number four? And this is kind of related to hypothesis three, but um, did you notice that the stimulus, the facts, didn't actually compare his old gas water heater with the new gas water heater in terms of which one is more efficient, right? It just kind of suggests that the new one is more efficient. And that suggestion holds only if we make the assumption that I already addressed in hypo, hypo number three, which is that the rating is good, right? Presumably, let's, let's say the rating is good, fine. Even if the rating is good, in, in other words, the new gas water heater is highly efficient, how does that compare to the old one? See, you, you actually don't know, right? It's, I, again, it's not like the odds are exactly 50-50. The fact that this one is older, the fact that this one is a newer, uh, you know, knowing what we know about our world and how technology evolves in one direction. Again, that's some evidence that the new one is probably going to be more efficient, but again, it's not this positive evidence. So it could be that, look, here's another hypothesis. How about his old heater was actually super efficient as well, right? Super efficient. In fact, you know, more efficient than the new one that he's replacing it with. It's possible, right? It's possible. Um, I don't suppose it's that likely as a hypothesis, but it surely is possible as a hypothesis, right? So, okay, I mean, I think you get the idea. We can just keep going here, right? We can really just keep going and come up with more and more hypotheses. But at this point, I want to turn our attention to the answers. And let's start by examining answer choice E, which says, unusually cold weather following installation of the new water heater resulted in heavy gas usage. What do you think with that? Would hypothesis E provide an explanation to the fact set, to the phenomenon that we encounter in the stimulus? The answer is yes, it would. Right? Of course it would. What happened right after the installation of the new water heater? It got unusually cold. And what, did Jimmy just tough it out? No, he didn't. Jimmy is a little bitch, and he turned on every heater in the house, resulting in heavy gas usage. Now it's like, well, no, duh, your gas bill is going to go up. You could have installed the most efficient new gas heater in the world, 10 times more efficient than your old one. If your gas usage went up by more than 10x, your gas bills are going to go up. So this is a great explanation. Now, how about D? Jimmy's utility company raised the rates for gas consumption following installation of the new water heater. Well, great. That's something we anticipated already. Of course that would explain it. All right, how about C? Having done his laundry at a laundromat, Jimmy bought and started using a gas dryer when he replaced his water heater. Now that's interesting. I never would have thought of that. But what C is saying is that previously, before he changed out his water heater, he was doing laundry at a laundromat. Now where is he doing laundry? At home. And how is he drying his clothes? With the brand new gas dryer that he bought. This new appliance is an additional source of gas consumption that was not present before. So now, once again, his gas bill increase is not a surprise anymore. Because, look, it had really nothing to do with his new gas water heater compared to the old one, the new one presumably is more efficient. It's just that he has another appliance now that consumes gas that wasn't there before. So yes, of course, his gas bill would also increase. Great. C also is an effective explanation. How about B? Shortly after the new water heater was installed, Jimmy's uncle came to live with him, doubling the size of the household. You might be a bit hesitant on this one because you might ask yourself, well, hold on, all, all that we know is that Jimmy's uncle came to live with him, right? And apparently Jimmy used to live alone. Nobody's surprised by that. And now Jimmy's uncle being there doubles the size of his household. So am I supposed to assume that that means gas consumption goes up? And the answer is yes. You are to make that assumption and you are to note that you made that assumption. Okay, so in order for B to work as an explanation, it's not good enough that his uncle came to live with him. 
we need to additionally assume that his uncle's coming here to live with him resulted in uh, more gas usage than otherwise would have taken place, right? So yes, that's an assumption, but it's not a big assumption. It's not an unreasonable assumption, right? And and while we're on the issue of unreasonable assumptions, you notice these others actually require a bit of assumption of, of their own as well. For example, like, let's look at D. Utility company raised rates, right? How much? It, they needed to have raised rates by enough for it to have made a difference. What if they raise rates by like 0.0001%? Well, if the new gas heater is more efficient than 0.001%, then this wouldn't be an explanation. So it is kind of a messy thing, but like even the right answer choices re require some kind of assumption for them, for them to work. And for those of you who are actually pretty sharp in terms of paying attention to the question stem, notice that the question stem is soft. The question stem, which one following true, contributes to an explanation. It, it didn't say which one of the following if true definitively explains, right? If it has said definitively explains, then I actually don't think, I don't think any of them will be good enough, right? Because they're setting the standard too high if they change this to definitively explains, right? But rather they have a kind of lower standard, you know, contributes to an explanation. All right, yeah, B contributes to an explanation on, um, you know, certain assumptions about his uncle. Uh, D contributes an explanation on certain assumptions about how much the utility company raised gas rates by. But all those assumptions pale in comparison to what answer choice A needs to assume in order for it to be right. In fact, I don't even know what in like how we have to contort the world to make A an explanation. Let's just take a look at A. The new water heater uses a smaller percentage of the gas used by Jimmy's household than did the old one. So whatever percentage, like the Jimmy's household used this much gas, right? This, this represents all of the gas. The new water heater uses, um, let's just slice off this, this chunk over here so it doesn't use this. The new one only uses this much. This is what, roughly 70%? Looks kind of eyeball, looks like 70%, fine. So the new water heater uses 70% of the gas. How, like in what world could this possibly explain why his gas bills went up? If, if anything, this only deepens the mystery. It, it makes it weirder that his gas bills went up, right? Now I'm really casting out for an explanation. Come on, his uncle came, right? And his aunt and their whole family of 12 kids, right? Um, not, not only did he buy a new gas dryer, he also bought a gas powered flamethrower, right? Like it's just, there's no way that this answer choice. It's, it's not even, you see what I mean? It's not even about like, oh, we just need to make a little assumption here and then this answer choice does it. No, there's something like really fundamentally wrong with this answer choice, right? It does not contribute to an explanation, which is why this is actually the right answer choice, okay? Because now we get to this point about how to encounter accept questions. I think this is the first question in this uh, logical reasoning mini course where we encounter an accept. The best way to do accept questions, this is this will really save you a lot of mental contortion, a lot of uh, headache, which is just to ignore the word accept. Every time you see the word accept, just swap it out for four. And what this four means is that you're just doing a regular question of that type where you're gonna circle four right answers, right? You're gonna circle four right answers. And of course, the last answer standing is the one that you're actually going to click on and input into your tester as the correct answer choice. Easiest way to deal with um, to avoid, really to avoid having to deal with what, what it means for a question to be accepted.